With just data, some coding skills and Google, you could create an ML model that will truly shape the world and learning about machine learning is one of the biggest investments in yourself that you can potentially make. This video is what I would show my younger self if I could go back in time and speed you up in learning ML. We will break up this video into three parts. Mindset, hard skills and learning the theory behind ML. These steps are meant to be done at the same time. If you are not in college or any program, cool. This video is meant to be a self-studying guide. It is usually a bit tougher to learn it on your own, but it will also teach you additional skills along the way. And if you put in the work, you can definitely learn it. I will also answer the question of how you can use these steps to start a career in machine learning in the end. So stay tuned for this. Your mindset. ML practitioners think differently about the world and its problems. And I can confidently say that my day-to-day -day life and thinking is different now that I am a machine learning engineer. Machine learning is not a topic that you will ever finish learning. It's a journey and not a destination. I see many people that just get overwhelmed by all the architecture, skills and math that you can possibly know. If your goal is to learn everything, it will be tough. But on the other hand, it becomes very manageable if you focus on learning one thing at a time. Step 1.1. Adopt a data mindset. And what I mean by that is for every concrete question in your life, business or projects, there is probably data that can help you take decisions either now or in the future. And getting good at machine learning includes understanding what data can tell you. Some data is collected and some collection processes you have to start before even thinking about doing the project. If I look hard enough, there is an approximate answer to everything. Want to know how much money a 20-year-old person can spend in Florida? Google can surely lead you to a dataset including relevant information. Just be aware of biases like the time the data was gathered and on which sub sets of people the data was collected. If you want to know the best right swipe Tinder ratio for maximum exposure, you're probably better off just taking better pictures. What I am saying might sound obvious, but learning what data is useful for what questions and goals is extremely hard. But in the end, what keeps me going to find that last piece of the puzzle in a week-long project is that I know the answer will be in the data or stop early if it's not. And this brings me to part 1.2, asking the right questions. Einstein famously said, if I had an hour to solve a problem and my life depended on the solution, I would spend the first 55 minutes determining the proper question to ask. For once I know the proper question, I could solve the problem in less than five minutes. Einstein. His statement couldn't be more true for ML. People will often come to you with strange questions like what makes our customers happy? If you listen closely and are trained in the art of powerful questions, you might notice that they want to know something completely different. Like what can we do in the next six months that makes our customers happier? You then need to go to some domain expert and figure out what it is that your company is actually doing. Once you know that, the question might become what of these things do customers actually care about? And finally, the question ends up being what are the easiest and cheapest things we can do to maximize the happiness of our important customers? And especially when it comes to machine learning, here the real journey just begins. Can you build a model to classify customers that really hate when X or Y happens? Or is a simple if case on the age of the customers already 90% perfect? Trust me, I used to be the first person to throw deep learning at every problem I encountered before finding out what it actually was that I'm trying to achieve. Understanding the problem and asking the right questions is what really makes you a good AI specialist. This brings me to part 1.3, know how much you know. Our world is filled with probabilities and uncertainties and many will fail to quantify them correctly. Have you ever heard someone promise this investment will work for sure and then it somehow didn't? Why did I think you could do this? This one simple thing. It's like I'm talking to a monkey. Look, people are extremely bad at estimating uncertainties and expressing themselves correctly when faced with them. What is the likelihood of this marketing campaign becoming a success? Person 1 might say, maybe, and person 2 might say, maybe. As they found out in studies, the word maybe can mean anything between 5% and 95% and that is dangerous, because everyone in the room might feel like they understand each other, but one thinks 10% and the other 90, which is really something you can't do in machine learning. 
Let's imagine a male classifier. They might say, if it mostly works, it's good enough. Now, that can mean anything. Do they think 1 out of 10 can be misclassified or 1 out of 100? Some related questions are knowing how much you know, aka are there mistakes in your labeled dataset? What will you never know? Will there always be noise in the input of your model? And knowing how much you have to know. In other words, how good do you have to be? Are some of the most crucial things that you should always ask yourself when doing any project in machine learning. If you prefer answers, subscribing will surely help as well. Part 2. Learning the hard skills. Now that you have adopted the right mindset, it's time to learn how to apply machine learning to the world. I can't say this will always be easy, but I promise it, it will be fulfilling. There are three essential parts to machine learning. And those are programming, manipulating data, and finally feeding it into a black box, aka machine learning itself. Step 2.1. Learn programming. Well, the language you use to learn programming doesn't matter at all. I highly encourage you to first take an introductory course in programming. Ideally, you would learn Python, but if you know any other language, you will surely be okay. In the end, once you have learned your first programming language, the others will be massively easier. Step 2.2. Learn to manipulate data. Data is the new oil and not machine learning. Learning how to load, analyze and aggregate data is key. After you know the basics of, let's say, Python, understanding how to use Pandas is a must. Pandas is extremely powerful and has a lot more functionality than you will ever need. However, spending a few weeks only learning how its indexing works and how you can query data frames surely will pay off. It's one of these skills that everyone in the field has, but no one learned explicitly first. And I think this is a mistake. You can save so much time if you get to understand, apply, map, and reduce functionality as early as possible. Very similar is SQL. Knowing how to extract and pre-aggregate data from any SQL-like database is powerful. In the case of, for example, Google's BigQuery, you can even do machine learning directly inside the SQL language. Additionally, knowing about group bias, partitions, and window functions will save you months of work in the long run. Those are the aspects of data engineering everyone working with data should know from analysts to data scientists to data engineer. But there is also a part of data manipulation that is specific to machine learning, namely data augmentation, data scaling, data reshaping and data balancing, to name only a few. Step 2.3. Applied machine learning. Being able to apply machine learning to data is what differentiates AI specialists from other data practitioners. Now looking back at my own learning path, I would argue that I put probably a bit too much emphasis on understanding every detail of deep learning architecture instead of giving the often just as good and a lot easier to use algorithms like XGBoost and Random Forest a rough learn. But still learning the basics of deep learning and how embeddings and loss functions work is important. However, especially early on, don't try to understand them all at once. These architectures change extremely fast and as soon as you understand one optimization algorithm or architecture, the next one will be released. Therefore, if I had to start over, I would put more weight on learning the classical algorithms from linear regression to trees, boosting and begging. This brings me to step 3, the theory behind ML. Looking back, the theory was the one that scared me the most. Unjustified as I know by now, because quite honestly, a lot of it you will never have to understand into every last detail. And quite honestly, it would also be impossible given how fast the field changes. Step 3.1, get an overview first. The main learning for me is that it's best at this stage to first get a rough overview of all topics that exist. And once you know what is out there, dive deeper into them. Don't spend weeks to understand every last drop of mathematics that is inside the newest optimizers. Focus on the bigger picture. The basics of machine learning for me are classification, regression, clustering, dimensionality reduction, model selection, pre-processing, bias variance, the basics of deep neural networks like dense layers and not the newest transformers models ensembles, optimization, boosting, bagging, debiasing and hyperparameter tuning in general. Learn a few unrelated algorithms roughly from each category and you will make far more progress than learning 10 linear regression algorithms like I did. 
What I mean is when learning classification, for example, learn how to do it with logistic regression, SVMs, k nearest neighbors, and decision trees, and build from there once needed. Step 3.2, love what you learn. This is key. It's better to work 10 hours motivated on a topic you love than five hours educationally perfect topics that you hate and take 20 breaks. Try to make everything fun and combine it with your other passions. I generate music using neural networks, for example, and even though most of the specific data structures and algorithms are useless for anything else as the guitars in my room may indicate I was extremely motivated and learned so much because I really wanted the model to do well. More educational projects would teach you more but loving what you do really gets you to put in those extra hours and learn much more in the long run. I mentioned this here because especially when learning mathematical theory or reading papers, it is important to know why you are doing it. Step 3.3, dig deep and math. Now that you know what ML engineers do, do a deep dive into a field or project. This can be a university project, a personal hobby you want to bring to life or a Kegel competition. The important part is that you finish it and learn how to do a project from idea to production. Production means that it is fully functional and exists on the internet. This will put everything you learned together. All projects are born different and you can never find the perfect one. So go and solve a real world problem that you can show to potential employers. And this is exactly why you should release it. Build a portfolio, aka a list of projects. And from here on, start extending this list or explore concepts in more depth that you noticed you are lacking in. This is by far the best way to either get an internship in machine learning or a job and show them that you can apply everything we talked about so far and build your CV. Some final words about math, the scariest aspects of machine learning theory and I have an entire video dedicated to it. The main tip is that you should learn linear algebra, statistics and calculus to some basic extent before starting ML theory. I feel that as long as you had a basic course at some point in one of them, you are good to go. The rest I would learn while doing machine learning and its applications for linear algebra SVD, for example, for calculus, loss functions and backpropagation. For statistics, always spend one hour when you encounter a new term and build your knowledge as you go. This was my take on how I would learn machine learning if I had to start over. Remember, it's a journey and each step brings you closer to your goal. So stay motivated and love what you do. With this being said, make sure to check out my video on how much math you need for machine learning. It will explain everything you need to know and how to approach this crucial aspect of machine learning theory. If you want to know how to do this professionally, check out my video on how to become an ML engineer. With that being said, like and subscribe so you can learn everything about your favorite topic.